The Way of the Exploding Fist. A classic 1980s fighting game for the Sinclair Spectrum gets a modern update in 2023 on the all-singing, all-dancing ZX Spectrum Next. Hi, I'm Retro Steve UK, and welcome to this retro game review of the newly released Way of the Exploding Fist from Wasp Studios on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum Next. This is an updated conversion of the original Spectrum 48K game released in 1985 by Melbourne House Software, which was also available on most other 8 bit micros at the time. Way of the Exploding Fist was one of the more high-profile fighting games from the mid-80s, the Spectrum equivalent of a AAA game, and was sold for a recommended retail price of £8.95, which is pretty much what most full-price titles would have set you back at the time. During each fight, with a range of punches, kicks, blocks and leaps at your disposal, you'll receive either a half or a full point, graphically represented by the yin-yang symbols, for successfully landing a blow on your opponent. You win each bout either by reaching two full points, or by having the most points when the timer runs out. In the event of a draw, the winner is determined by each player's performance during the fight. You'll start at Novice level, and as you win each bout, you'll move up through the Dan levels, which are a standard ranking system used by martial arts organisations. The ultimate aim of the game is to reach 10th Dan. This is no mean feat, however, as each successive opponent becomes progressively more difficult to beat. There is also a two-player mode, which has a slightly different judging system. The winner of each two-player fight is the player with the most points after a set of four timed bouts. The Spectrum Next version follows the same scoring and progression system, but with upgraded graphics and sound, smoother gameplay and some additional menu options. The menu sections are now accompanied by a banging guitar-based music track, made possible by the Spectrum Next's ability to stream sampled audio directly from its SD card. That music is playing right now in the background of this video, captured directly from the game. There are also some suitably atmospheric in-game background tunes, produced using the machine's AY sound chips, which you'll get to hear a little later in this review. And the in-game spot effects feature various sampled grunts, punches and kicks, which are a vast improvement over the original game's simple one-channel beeper effects. From the main menu, you can set the colour of each player's hair and costume, and there's also now a handy control demo, where you can practice your fighting moves at your own pace, free from the danger of being attacked by a computer opponent. Compared to the original game, this updated version definitely feels smoother and more responsive, although the collision detection seems to have been tightened up, with moves now being slightly more difficult to land. It seems you need to be more accurate with the placing of your punches and kicks in this version, making it more difficult to land a blow. Whether this is a good or a bad thing depends on how much you enjoy a challenge. The computer opponents also seem to be more aggressive earlier on in the game, making the early fights feel more challenging, and this can lead to frustration. Personally, I was only just able to reach the third level, so that's all I've been able to show you in this review. Frustrations aside, the game did still leave me with a desire to play again, and I'm sure that with more practice, I'll be able to improve my performance. The control scheme is a unique beast, with specific moves triggered using a one-button joystick system, so don't expect Street Fighter-like combos and multi-button controls. Each of the 19 different moves at your disposal are triggered by the 8 directions of the joystick with or without the fire button pressed. It's a difficult learning curve, but if you master it, you'll find it second nature to walk up to an opponent, leap over him, turn around and take him out with a swift leg sweep or roundhouse kick. Or not, as the case may be. Keyboard control is also an option, using 9 different keys for the 8 directions and fire button, but my personal weapon of choice is an arcade art joystick from Syntec, which makes it very easy to hit all the diagonal moves. There's a link to their website in the description. Overall, this souped up version of Way of the Exploding Fist is an impressive update of the 48k original. It's hard as nails to play, but fun for anyone with enough patience to learn the controls and put in the practice. The upgraded menus, graphics and sound are an absolute delight, and the ironed out gameplay feels solid by comparison. Although some tweaking to the collision detection and enemy AI wouldn't go amiss, and maybe a difficulty setting for those of us who are prone to the occasional rage quit. The game is available from the Wasp Studio website as a physical release in limited quantities, and as a digital download. Link in the description.
I reached out on the official Spectrum Next Facebook group for thoughts and memories of this game to share in this video, and a few people did respond, so here are a selection of your comments. Gary Cordery Davis thinks the next version is way f***ing harder than the original, but a great game on both systems nonetheless. He also doesn't miss having trailing cables causing trip hazards and getting neck ache after playing it lying on the floor while looking up at the telly. Graham Tomlinson doesn't like how the computer opponent in this new version seems to throw moves back faster than in the original Specky version, and also misses the way remaining seconds in each bout used to be converted into points. Andrew Phillips pretty much wrote an entire review of the game in his comment, so you can pause and read that on screen if you'd like, but the main points covered were the lack of graphical variation in the original game, the awesome music, artwork and animation in the new version, the new player customization features, the collision detection being slightly better in the original version, and the modern computer opponents being harder to beat. Andrew also shared a picture of his lovely big 75-inch TV running the Spectrum Next version of Way of the Exploding Fist, which looks amazing. Miguel Cruz didn't seem that impressed and just said that after 10 tries, he gave up playing. Pedro Alejandre Timoteo misses being able to play with just four directional keys on the keyboard, as combinations of up and right or similar don't seem to work on the Spectrum Next version due to the lack of a Sinclair joystick option, which was mapped to the numbered cursor keys. And finally, Jay Cooper has an amazing story about how the original game inspired him to take up martial arts when he was younger, and that he's now a professional full-time martial artist. I asked him how he thinks the game compares to the real thing, and according to Jay, it captures the essence and spirit of the karate-style matches that are scored by the Ippon Wazari point system, and the game moves are reasonable enough facsimiles, with the required adjustments for play purposes. Jay has a YouTube channel called Reality Check, which is well worth checking out. I'll put a link to that in the description. So, do you have any memories of playing this game? Maybe you played another version, or one of the more recent updates? Whatever your thoughts, let us know in the comments, and if you'd like to be included in a future video, follow me on my various social media accounts, where I'll be reaching out for contributions whenever I'm working on something new. Those links are also in the description. We'll finish off now, but first I'd like to thank everyone who shared their memories, to thank you for liking and subscribing, and to thank you all for watching Retrospectives.